Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. And welcome again to another Bible class. We're so happy that God has blessed us again to be able to come into your homes and be coming to his presence and uh, just be able to celebrate and, 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 and fellowship together. Uh, the, the wonderful name of Jesus and what he has done for us. And also to be able, certainly to be able to get into the scripture and be able to study the scripture. Uh, today is September the 1st, uh, 2021. And we certainly thank God for what he has done for us and just allowing us this time. Uh, listen, it's, we, we, we don't take it for granted, but we know that it's God that is one that's providing and, and giving us another opportunity. Uh, Lord have mercy and we just thank him for it. Listen, pray with us as we are about to get started with our Bible class. We'll sing a song and then we'll go ahead and, and take a dive into the scripture and see what the Lord will say to us. Pray with us now. Oh Lord, we honor your name and we thank you for being God. Thank you for loving us, Lord, and thank you for how you have made a way. We give you both honor and glory today, Lord, because of all of the wonderful things that you have done. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We honor you because you're the one that did it. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for giving us this day our daily bread. And Lord, we pray that you would forgive us. Forgive us our sins and our, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lord, we need you every day. We need you every hour, Lord. Now we pray that you would bless everyone that's going to be listening, everyone that's going to be here viewing this message, Lord, and all of the supporters of this ministry. Bless us all, Lord, and speak to us all. Speak a word to us, Lord. Uh, we need to hear your voice. We thank you for it, and we honor you. We love you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, the blood, blood of Jesus. I'm singing, oh, the blood, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Singing, oh, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, the blood. Blood of Jesus, I'm singing, oh, the blood, the blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood, in the blood. Of the Lamb, oh, of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of an old list. There's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb, oh, of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank God for those, those hymns. Uh, Lord have mercy. I just appreciate the Lord. Listen, we're going to Acts chapter number four. Last couple of weeks we've been talking about in the book of Mark, uh, but we're going to go to Acts uh, today going and looking at some of the acts of the apostles. Of course, the acts is kind of the history book uh, that records some of the things that happened uh, for during the church and to uh, those apostles and those followers of Jesus Christ. Uh, after our Lord has ascended to heaven, but going back to heaven to prepare a place for us, he leaves the church in good hands and he leaves it in the hands of capable men capable women that he has left this his, 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 his this work of the ministry into those people hand and now whatever they bind on earth the lord said i'm going i'll bind it in heaven and anything that they loose on earth now god is saying i'll loose it on heaven so what we find in the book of chapter in the fourth chapter here right we're tonight uh chapter number one we, we began reading about some of the things that were happening uh, to the disciples and to those apostles, to those followers of the Lord, 
uh, during this infant stage, the beginning stages of, of the church after our Lord and, and Jesus Christ has ascended back to heaven. Verse 1 says this, And as they spake unto the people, the disciples are speaking and they are talking to the people, trying to tell everyone they, that they know about the goodness of our Lord, about what the Lord has prepared and what the Lord has said and has commissioned them to do. Remember, this is the group that had received the great commission from the Lord in the book of Matthew, chapter 28 and verse 19, the Lord said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Well, this is the group of people. He, the, these folks that, that, that are talking right here, that's, that, that, that are now speaking to people, they're the ones that have been commissioned by the Lord to go and do this work. And the Bible says this, and as they spake unto the people, during the same time that they're speaking, the priests, and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. Uh, now that's important right there because what we need to be aware of is that at the same time you are trying to do the work of the ministry and you're trying to live your life for the Lord and you're trying to walk up right before the Lord. At that same time, don't be, be surprised that people will come against you and the enemies of Christ and the enemies of the cross will come against you. At the same time, you're trying to declare and celebrate the name of Jesus Christ. The same time you're seeking and you're trying to serve the Lord, uh, Lord, and, and with gladness and, the full, and, and with joy, Lord have mercy. At that same time, the enemies of the cross and the enemies of Christ, they'll show up. In fact, some of them, they don't, they don't have anything that they, they normally wouldn't be doing, ha dealing with each other. Uh, but because they are, they have a common enemy, which is the cross, which is Christ which is the name of Jesus. They have a common enemy. They're willing to collaborate together. And I'm telling you, that's the way it works. Uh, that, that Don't be surprised that, that, that people will collaborate and try to get together to try to, 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 to hurt you and try to destroy who you are because of what you stand for. Uh, before, because of what you are standing for and what you are trying to achieve. What are you doing? You're just simply trying to do those things that God has told you to do. You, you're just simply trying to walk up right before the Lord. But don't be surprised that the enemy starts shooting at you. Uh, that's the reason we have to take what he says, put on, on you, therefore, the whole armor of Jesus Christ. Uh, why? So that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Uh, the devil starts shooting at you. Uh, he start coming at you with, with, with things and, 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 and have different groups getting together, as in this case, getting together in order to try to stop what you're doing. Ah, oh, Lord have mercy, please. I'm telling you to try to stand, continue to stand, and after you've done all to stand, keep on standing. Uh, but the enemy, but don't think that the enemy is going to just stop and, because you decided that you're going to try to live right. And you're going to try to do what's right. You're going to try to do the will of the Lord. Don't think the enemy is going to stop. I'm telling you, be, be in for the long haul. Be in for the fight and be up for the fight because it's going to be a battle. So the Bible says, and as they spake unto the people, they're speaking to the people. God has commissioned them told him to go and do his work. He says, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees, they came upon them. What did they come upon them to do? They came upon them to stop them from their work. They came upon them to intimidate them. Ah, oh, Lord, they, they, they came upon them to make them fearful. They came upon them to oppose them, what they were doing. They came upon them to shake their faith. Uh, first Peter chapter number five and verse eight is important right here. First Peter chapter number five and verse number eight is important right here. I said they came upon them. The scripture says as they were trying to do the work of the Lord, that these groups came upon them to stop them, to intimidate them. Listen what first Peter chapter number five and verse number eight says. It says, be sober, be vigilant, 
because your adversary, the devil, don't make no mistake about it, your adversary, my adversary, our adversary, for anyone that's trying to do the will of Christ is the devil. Lord have mercy, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. The devil, the devil, he tell, the Bible tells us to be sober. Huh? Lord have mercy, be sober. Know what you're there for. Know, what, know who you are. Know why you're there. Know what you're doing. Be sober. Uh, somebody said, be true to it. Don't be new to it. Be sober. Uh, be vigilant. What does vigilant mean? Is this, it, vigilant simply means to watch and pray. Uh, you know, don't assume anything. As you're trying to do the will of God, as you're trying to walk up right before God, don't assume that everyone's going to love you. Uh, don't assume that everyone is going to be for you. Don't assume that everyone is going to support what you're trying to do. Lord, there's going to be maybe folks in your own household that, that come against you, that oppose you, that try to intimidate you, that try to stop you, that try to make you fearful, that, that tries to, 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 to shake your faith in Christ. Don't be surprised. That's what he says. He says, be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Why do I need to do this? Because your adversary, my adversary, our adversary, the devil, he's coming as a roaring lion and he's trying. He's walking about. Oh, God have mercy. He's going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Uh, for those people that are not sober, that are not thinking, uh, that, that are not vigilant, that are not watching, that are not praying, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. That those are the ones who become susceptible and and become uh and uh, likely to become a victim of the devil. But the Bible tells us first Peter is right. In fact, Peter is one of these one that that's speaking to the people in the book of Acts. He's one of the one that's speaking to the people in the book of Acts. He's the one that one of the ones that have been commissioned, but but he goes on to write uh, uh, an, epistle, an epistle, and he writes one of the a letter, and one of the things he put in, he said, "Be sober." He says, "There's some things that I've encountered while I've been walking with Christ." He says, "Be vigilant." There's some there's some people that have come against me while I have been walking and been trying to do the will of the Lord. He tells us. In his writing, he says, because you got an adversary. We have an adversary. We have an enemy. Lord, that's trying to stop us and, and trying to throw up roadblocks on every end. Uh, if it ain't one thing, if it's another. Sometimes you, the, the devil comes and, and tries to, to, to afflict our bodies. Uh, but I'm telling you, God knows what's going on, my brothers and sisters. God knows what's going, whatever happening in your life, whatever is happening in my life is not something that's new to God. God is already aware of it. He's, he knew what was going to happen. He knew what was going to happen when he told, when he commissioned the disciples, when he told them to go and teach all nations, when he told them to do that, he knew it was going, what was, he knew that people were going to come against him. Ah, Lord have mercy. He knew that people were going to collaborate and try to destroy them and stop them from what and oppose them for what they are trying to do. And don't you be surprised. But I'm telling you also, don't you stop. Don't you quit. I'm telling you to hold on to that, to, to Christ. And you keep on lifting up the name of Christ. Ah, Lord have mercy. Verse number two goes like this. Verse number two goes like this. Being grieved, who was grieved? Uh, the, the one that were grieved was the priest was grieved, the captain of the temple were grieved, and the Sadducees were grieved. Listen to this. The Sadducees were grieved because why? They, well, let me read this. It says, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection of the dead. One of the reasons the Sadducees are is grieved is because they don't believe in the resurrection. They don't believe that 
uh, one after he has died is going to be resurrected. Oh Lord, that's the reason they have a problem with what the disciples are teaching. But but what the disciples are teaching and they're teaching uh about something that not something that they they, they was hoping for or or thought would, would happen. They're teaching about something they know that was happening because the Bible said they were witnesses. The Lord purposely had witnesses when after he died, after he got up out of the grave. The Lord purposely had witnesses to ensure that it wasn't just one or not just simply his disciples that saw him after he got up. But God had, he had many, many witnesses of people that he, he talked to and he walked with. He showed himself to, he presented himself to after he had, after he had died and after he had raised himself from the grave. Lord have mercy. God has shown he, these people are witnesses what, of what the Lord had done. The disciples are his witnesses. And now what they're doing is going and speaking those things that they witness. They're witness that Jesus is able to raise not only himself, but he's able to raise us up from the dead. And we can walk in the newness of life because of Christ. The Bible says being grieved. I told her something Sunday. I spoke something during my ministry during on Sunday. I was reading in the scripture and it said that, that Jesus said it's going to be impossible, basically what I'm paraphrasing, for you to get through this life and not either offending or being offended by something or someone. There's something or someone at some point is going to offend you. It's impossible for us to get through life and not be offended. These people who the, the, that, that are coming against, that, that are coming against and have come upon the disciples as they're teaching and they're preaching, uh, these people that have come, they have been grieved. They have been offended by what they have heard. And they are now are going to do their very best to try to stop it. Oh, Lord have mercy. What, why are they offended? What is, what has been, what is so offensive that they have taken such great offenses? Well, it's the same thing people are being offended in now. Jesus said, blessed are you if you're not going to, if, for those that are not going to be offended in me. He said, it's, it's a blessing if you, but I'm telling you, folks are going to be offended. The Lord already knew it. He, he know, he said, what are they offended in? They are offended because of the truth of God. They are offended because God truth is being spoken, is being taught to the people. And I'm telling you, if you begin to teach people the truth, there are some folks that are going to catch on. They're going to believe it. They're going to hold on to it. They're going to gain eternal life as a result of it. And as a, and because of that, the enemy, the devil, who has no opportunity to have eternal life now, will now, he'll come after you. He'll come after you trying to destroy you because he's, he's trying to ensure that you, that you and I do not have an opportunity to gain eternal life. Oh, my Lord, I thank you, Jesus. They're coming after people because of the truth. What were they saying? They may have been saying that there's one Lord. There's one faith and there's one baptism. That's the truth. I'm telling you, when you start talking like that, uh, Lord have mercy, people will get offended because of the truth. You tell them that there ain't but one Lord. There ain't but one. There's one Lord and his name is Jesus. There's one Lord. I don't care what name or what, what tongue or what you speak it in. His name is Jesus. There's one Lord. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. One Lord, that's Jesus. Tell them that, tell them there is no other God beside him. In fact, the Lord said over, I think in Isaiah, he said, if there is another God, I don't even know him. There's one Lord. People get offended because of that. There's one baptism. And everybody don't know how to baptize you. So don't, don't just let everybody baptize you. 
And if you hadn't been baptized in Jesus' name, that is the only way to be baptized. People will get offended by folks saying and talking like this as, as if they are the only one that's right. And sometimes, uh, unfortunately, I think, you know, we as people of God, saint, sanctified people, apostolic folk, oftentimes, sometimes we seemingly come across as being the only one that's right. We are not the only one that's right. We are just some of the ones that's right. We are the, we're the only one. If the one that, if someone is teaching and preaching the truth, those people are right. I don't care what they call themselves. It doesn't matter what title or what name they go under. If they are teaching and preaching the truth. But we're speaking, though, know, when, when people start pe teaching and preaching the truth of God, people get offended. They get offended about what was being taught to people. They, they was teaching, may have been teaching people that everybody has to have the Holy Ghost. That the Holy Ghost is not just a gift for some, but is necessary and required for all if you're going to have salvation. People will get offended by that. How do you know? Well, I'm only teaching what the Lord has opened my mind and understanding to. I'm only teaching and preaching what the Lord has given us and what the Lord has told us and what he has shared with us. And thank God for him opening up our understanding so that when we read the scripture, we can understand what is being said. Listen to this. There's also one heaven. It's not a heaven for, for, for light-skinned people and a heaven for black or dark-skinned people. That offends people because uh, you, apparently some think that there's going to be, uh, uh, t heaven is going to be divided. That, that the, that the light-skinned people are going to be on this side of heaven and the dark-skinned people are going to be on this side. That's not the case. If we get to heaven, there's one heaven. There's also one hell. I don't care what anybody tell you. They can, some are saying, well, this is hell on earth. Whatever you want to say, I don't care what you say. There is one hell. And if you, we uh, do not do what is required, if we don't obey God's truth, the unfortunate truth is we're going to either go to heaven or we're going to go to hell. We make that decision while we are living. So while we are living, you and I, we get to make that decision. How do we make it? It's not, it's not just in how we talk, but it's how we walk, the life that we live. Talking, yes, is important. Also, I'm not, dis, I'm not dis, uh, disclaiming that uh, or, or submitting that, that talking is not important. You got to talk the right talk. But you got to walk the right walk. You have to live the right life. As the disciples, the Bible says at the same time they are teaching and they're preaching, that some came upon them to oppose them and to stop them from what they're doing. And the Bible says that 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 they were grieved, they were they were uh, uh, they were mad, they were offended by what they were hearing. And I'm telling you, as we live and try to live our life for the Lord and try to do the things of God, sometimes people will be offended. But I'm telling you to hold on to the truth. Keep on speaking the truth. Keep on walking right. Keep on talking right. Keep on living the, the best life you possibly can in accordance with what the Lord has given you. Walk in his truth, my brothers and sisters. The Bible says in verse four, four listen, the verse in verse three. It says, and they laid hands on them uh, and put them on hold. They arrested them until the next day. That, that's basically what happened. They got arrested. They got arrested. Listen to this. But verse 4 says this. How be it many of them which heard the word believe. And that's what, that is the great truth in all of this. That I'm telling you that if we will keep on speaking those things and living a life before people, living an exemplatory life as God has told us to do, somebody is going to believe it. Someone is going to see it. Someone is going to hear it. Someone is going to believe it. Someone is going to follow it. Someone is going to trust it. 
Ah, Lord have mercy. What did Jesus say? St. John chapter 12 and 32. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. What God needs is somebody that's willing, got enough courage, enough faith to lift him up. To say that there's one Lord. To say that there's one faith. To say that there's one baptism. Say that there's everybody need the Holy Ghost. Say, say, that, say that, that, that there's one Lord. That there's one heaven. There's one hell. Say to those things. Speak those things of God. Need somebody to be have enough courage to speak to those those truths of God, and don't worry about what, what whether or not people are happy with your saying, but keep on speaking those things. Lift the name of the Lord up. David says in Psalm chapter thirty verse one, he says, "I will extol you, Lord." He said, "I'm going to lift you." Up. He went on to say, "I'm going to lift you up because you've lifted me up. I'm going to bless you, Lord. Oh Lord, you have blessed me." You brought me, Lord, out of the, the muck and the mire. You brought me from a mighty long way. You delivered me, Lord. I'm going to lift you up. And that's what God wants us to be. Oh, Lord, have mercy with an understanding of who he is so that we can bless him and lift the name up. Listen, don't you be afraid and don't you be, uh, don't you be discouraged by the fact that people are coming against you strangers coming against you, but also folks maybe even uh, that you know of, friends and coming against you, and family may come against you to stop you from doing what you're doing, but what God has told you to do, you keep on doing it. Don't you stop, don't you quit, regardless of what happens. Ah, Lord, have mercy. Count yourself uh, as the disciples did. The Bible says in the book of Acts uh, that they count themselves worthy to be uh, uh, chastised, worthy to be persecuted, worthy to be whipped because of the name of the Lord. Oh, uh, Lord, have mercy. Go on and rejoice because you got a, you got a, you got something, you got a blessing that's waiting on you. God is going to bless you now, but there's also, you got a reward that's waiting on you, which is going to be heaven. God bless you even tonight. I, I'm, I, it's short tonight. But God bless every one of you. I'm so glad again that you have chosen to be with us. I'm going to pray for you as we are about to leave that God will continue to help you and God will continue to keep you uh, and in your walk with Christ. Uh, Lord, we thank you tonight. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for this, this time, Lord, this meeting here tonight where you've allowed us to come together. Now bless everyone that have come and that, that's been a part of this meeting. Bless our mind, Lord. Bless our heart. Encourage our heart, Lord. Strengthen our heart. Oh, Lord, help us to be sober. Help us to be vigilant. Lord, because the devil, our adversary, is coming after us and he's trying to destroy us and trying to stop us. But Lord, help us to keep on fighting the good fight of faith. Oh, Lord, help us to keep on running this race that's set before us, Lord. We love you and we thank you for helping us. We love you for all things in Jesus' name, we pray. Listen, on this Saturday, we're going to have graveside services for one of our own. Uh, Sister Brenda Crowder died, and we're going to have a graveside service there in vain at 11 o'clock. If you want to be a part of that, you're not required to, but if you wanted to, I will be there at, at that particular meeting on, on this Sunday. Of course, we have our online Sunday school, and we also have in-person Sunday school that is still happening. We're still adhering to CDC guidelines with regards to wearing our mask uh, when we're there in the sanctuary. The Lord is keeping us going to, and we're just trusting that he's going to continue to keep us. Also, we have worship at 1130. So we're looking forward to that. And who knows what the Lord is going to do. Listen, we just, when we come to worship, we come to, to subject ourselves to the Lord. Lord, we've come to worship, but whatever you want to do, Lord, do it, we pray. Lord, we're praying for you right now and that just praying that God will continue to, to be with you and keep you until the next time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.